and uh, open our ears and our hearts and with each word that he delivers this morning. Uh, thank you for blessing us with this building. Thank you for blessing us with the family that we have here and the love that we all share uh, for each other, but most importantly for you and for our Savior. I pray uh, just over the meal that we'll be having and uh, just ask that it's blessed, that we enjoy this time of fellowship and pray that our week goes well and we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What's the meal? Uh, <laughs>
worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Come on, sing it like you believe it. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And I will the church and get back to um, and through the love that we have for you. I just pray that we continue to um, give back and just give back what's already yours, Father God, what you've blessed us with. And uh, thank you for the outreaches that our church is able to do because of um, just those that are generous and and giving back uh, to us as a church, Father God. Thank you for this day and for all the love that you give. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
supper Lord's supper here so let's get everything ah is that it working <laughs> no <laughs> I I'm loud enough aren't I yeah um, <laughs> there we go that's it so um, right there. we had a great selection of songs today thank you Honoring our, our Lord and our Savior. And today we'll get a chance to remember Him as we do at the first of each month. Give everyone a chance to get their stuff here together. You at home, get a cracker or 
Tortillas. Tortillas. That's all okay. That's right tortillas sound good. Like tortillas. And a uh, juice, orange juice or whatever you got at home. Grape juice is what we prefer to use here. The Lord, he wanted to use wine. But can't do that in church, really. Anyhow, I just really like the songs they had today. It was really it reminded me of who we put our faith and our trust in. And that's what gives us the strength. And, and he endured so much for us. And um, today's the day where we get to remember everything that he went through and all the suffering that we put him through for our transgressions. And so I got a verse here I'll read out of Corinthians and then we'll um, do our communion. They got a few more people to hand stuff out to it looks like. Pull this up in 1 Corinthians. I'm gonna start at chapter 23 today so let's see we ready all right so if you get yours back there in the back ready to go um <clears throat> in corinthians 23 he starts for i pass on to you what we received what all of us received that night that he was betrayed from the lord jesus christ as he took the bread which i dropped <clears throat> he took the bread and gave thanks to God for it. He broke a piece and told, told the twelve, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And they ate it. In the same way, at the end of the meal, he took a cup of wine and said that this was a new covenant between me, us, and God. An agreement to confirm that my blood do, do this in remembrance of me and drink from this cup. When the Lord poured, for the Lord told us, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are announcing the Lord's death, and the most important part, is that he will be coming again. Amen. And this we pray, amen, as D. Thank you.
God's word to us today. You guys give him applause. Look at we're gonna have to lift him up in prayer too. Look at that for God about Hey, what's up, guys? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church. Thanks for being here. Look at this, man. This place is just filling up with people. I love it. It's good to see everybody. I brought two two well, three guests today, my friend Artie, his girlfriend Woo! Marie Maria, yes. and my little baby boy Xavier. I'm happy they're here too. Alright, so this is James 5, 1 through 6. Now listen, you rich people, weep and well because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted, and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded, their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened up yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Like I told you, in this church, we don't try to shy away from any, any scripture because all scripture is God-breathed and beneficial to us. I know as we read that, actually the last couple of times, I feel like uh, I feel like Jack always gives me the tough ones. I'm scared. I don't know why I schedule this. So I, I, it's not him at all. But you know, Scripture has a way of revealing the truth. 
You know what I mean? And we, we, we here in New Life don't want to shy away and leave anything out because it's beneficial to all of us, right? So thank you for reading that. I, I, I could tell like some of those words are kind of like, dang, eating the flesh and fire, but you know, like I, I came to get a feel good, you know, sermon, but you know, all sermons feel good because it's good to be, you know, correct. It's good to be straightened up. You know, in hindsight, like, I wish I would have listened to uh, more of my uncles and my dad and all those people that are always just trying to give me good advice. Here, James is like that, that, that uncle that's just trying to tell you, like, hey, man, you should really check your heart and see, see where it's at, see what's going on. Um, but before I get into the sermon all the way, I just wanted to remind you guys in these bulletins, we have a brother who has blessed us by putting together a little home study through the, through the scriptures that we'll be studying. And, and we, we encourage you guys to grab these and use them. I mean, because it's, it, it's just, it's, it's wonderful that he was willing to take his time out to do it, but it goes over what hopefully once we get the kids getting taught in the nursery, that's what they're going to be teaching them so that you can talk with your kids about it, you can talk with each other about it, and, you know, and challenge ourselves. You know, like it goes for me too. So I'm not just saying you do it, but, you know, we're going to try to do this together as a church. And then I did forget to mention this. You know, keep Brother Rob, who came right here in your prayers because his back is hurt. He just came back out of surgery. And we also want to thank our brother Arturo for building those uh, signs. We've, got, we've been having problems with people camping. So we had to put some signs up and we're like, do we just, you know, my, my solution was tape it on a wall and uh, that doesn't work. So he actually made us some really nice signs. So if we can thank Arturo for uh, doing that. Thank you so much. You know, and, and it, you know, that, that's, that's what it is. This is our home, guys. And I want you guys to feel like that when you come here. And, you know, like, when people do things like our children are doing or, or what uh, Rita's doing downstairs right now, or, you know, when we take ownership of it, man, I, I, don't, I think this place is just going to keep, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get better. You know what I mean? Because I, I want everybody who comes into these doors to feel welcome and to feel at home. Because it is your home. It's not my home. It's not your home. It's our home. You know, it's, it's ours together. So we've been going through a series called Outsiders. And like I said, we, we, we want to not only be the people inside looking out, but we want the people outside looking in to see him who was in us, to see Christ. You know, we're not called to be like other Christians, but we're called to be like Jesus Christ, right? And we're, we're hoping that when everybody, anybody comes in and peeks into these doors, they see the love of Christ and the light of him shining in us. That's what it means to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, right? So we've been going through the book of James, real faith, real life. You know, like I said, this is, this is, this is a church where I'm always going to be genuine with you guys. You know, we'll, we'll say I'm always going to try to be real with you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to try to, if I don't know something, I'm going to tell you, let me go check it out. But you know, like, I, I want you guys to always know that I'm going to always do my best because I love you guys. Um, last week, we talked about God's will and what that looks like in our lives and how he has a will that we want to push forward. But, you know, it gets tough sometimes because his will sometimes is at odds with whose will? Our own will. But when we become Christians, we surrender our wills and live for him. And then we go to chapter 5 and here James comes in and he just, he starts off you know, he kind of starts hitting a little hard, right? He's talking about, he says, well, weep those who are rich, right? And he's not saying that it's a sin to be rich here, but what he's saying is how you got your riches, what you do your riches, defines who you are in Christ. So I titled the message today, Rotten Riches, because what happens when you have ill-gotten treasures, can you cut my mic down just a little bit and get a little bit of feedback? When we have ill-gotten treasures, what it ends up doing, it starts to consume us and it starts to rot our hearts. We, we, we start to like love those things more than we love God. We start to love material things more than, than spiritual things. You know, ill-gotten treasures, it starts off, and we'll go through these verses, but it starts off by it, it brings misery. It, it, it starts to devour the owner. It starts to be consumed by it. You know, it, we start taking advantage of people. We start just getting fat and for the slaughter, what it just kind of means is we start to become gluttons. We, we start to not care. You know, and then we get to the part where we become murderers. 
games of sin. It, it just like all sin. What all sin does is any type of sin. It could be like the littlest thing, but that little thing it just starts to get get stronger and stronger. It could start like a like, you know, let's start by watching like BET and then, you know, and all of a sudden you're watching Pornhub. You know what I mean? Like, like, I mean, it gets, it gets, it gets, it drastically just gets serious. You know what I mean? It, when you let just say, you know, like, oh, it's just, it's a little bit of wine or we'll, we'll say those hard seltzers. Right? A little hard seltzer on the weekend and then all of a sudden, well, it's a little beer on the weekend and then. And all of a sudden you're drinking a kager, you know, not, well, maybe not a kager, but, <laughs> all right, you know how they jump, you know, there's a lot of in-betweens, but you know what I'm saying, like, sin, when you let it just start, if you don't nip it in the butt right away, it, it will grow and fester and it gets, gets more serious, it'll consume you. That's why God is, he takes it so serious, because he's saying, I'm not trying to just be a killjoy, but what I'm trying to say is I, I want you to have joy, and I don't want something to eat away at it. So James starts up because he, 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 he's directing it right to him. It's not like a third person. He's directing it towards the people that's, that are in the church. He's not saying, hey, when you go out into the world, you tell them, listen, you rich people. He's literally saying this to the people in the church. And he says, now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moss have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. And this reminds me of a story. I don't know if you guys are keen to scripture, but do you remember the, the wealthy landowner that all of a sudden, what, is, what does he do? He, he grows his crops and he fills his, his barns and he, he's just like, after a while, he's like, man, I could just go ahead and be merry the rest of my life. Now that I got the barns, I just make bigger ones and stockpile more stuff. And then what does God say? You fool. Your life is called today. So he spends his whole life just gathering up all this wealth, you would say, right? Food was wealth back then, but he just gathered it. Why? For what? Just to just now nobody's going to get any of it. That was the idea. Is he had all this food and he just hoarded it. We use food, but I mean, we're, we're using the, the gold and silver here, right? I think you know what I was reading this. I don't know if you guys remember DuckTales. I'm, I'm old, but DuckTales, right? I don't know if you remember Scrooge McDuck. Ah, oh, there you go. I got to a couple of you know, Remember Scrooge McDuck, what did he love to do? He loved to go dive into that big old thing of gold, right? And then, you know, and it just made me think. I was like, man, when I was a kid, like, that was that was put forth towards me. Like, I wanted that. A stockpile of gold. I can swim in. Like, now that you think about it, that just seems like nonsense. Like, why would you want to swim in coins? They're dirty and it's going to ruin. I guess it seems like a bad idea to jump in a pile of gold coins. But, you know, like, I mean, when I was a kid, like, that was literally what was promoted was you want to have as much in your possession as possible. You want to stockpile it. And, you know, I was, I was blessed the other day. I got to sit down with a brother and, you know, he, he, he had to use this, this word called or like this, this phrase called kingdom dollars, right? He was saying, man, you know, like all, all the excess money I have belongs to the kingdom anyway, Mike. I'm not worried about it. He said, by the time I'm ready to go, I hope that it's, it's gone because I can't take it with me. And I was just like, dude, that's what I'm about to preach. I'm going to use that. You know, this is, this, there's no, I'm going to say that on Sunday. Because, I mean, that, that was a wonderful uh, nugget of, of wisdom. So what he was saying is like, well, what good is it to have all this stuff if nobody benefits from it? And what is, it, what is he saying in Scripture? James is saying, man, you know what's going to testify against you is if you get to heaven and God's like, hey, man, you know, what, 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 what's going on? You know, like, you know, you, you left all that behind and all around you there was people that were hungry, that were thirsty, that, that could have used your help. You know, he's, and, and, and you know, we got to be responsible and take care of your family. But he, he's talking about like um, another, another story of the Bible is the guy with the talents. You, you remember, you know, the story of the talents. You got like three servants, right? He gets one servant, ten, then one servant, five, one servant, one, and then one servant just decides to go bury his his treasure that the master gave him. And then you know, long story short, the master just is like, "Why would you just bury it? It didn't. You did nothing with it." God blesses us with. X amount of whatever it is, if it's a gift, if it's a skill, or if it's money. 
so that way we could push forward his kingdom. That's the idea. He said, be a good steward of what I give you because I want you to grow this kingdom. I want you to grow the kingdom of heaven on earth. And, and James is just saving it the same way Jesus said, right? Or look at this Proverbs. That's the one Jesus said. We'll, we'll go read this proverb real quick. It says, honor the Lord from your wealth and the first of all you, you will produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So it's saying if you honor the Lord with your wealth, you, you're going to be blessed. You're going to get more. Like, I don't know how it works, but it just works that way. You give more, you get more. I don't know. I, but, but, I, but I can testify to it. Yeah. It's true. And a greater to give than to receive. Like, I, like I, in God's economy, like, I, I mean, I'm sure, like, I, I just met with a financial advisor and he, he, really, like, he even told me, like, it's weird, but it, it was just true that the more you give, the more you get. Yeah. Like, the less you hold on to it, it seems like you just keep giving more. You know, you know, it's cool. He just wants to keep filling you up so you can just keep on. Like he, he loves to do that. God just loves to just bless those who are blessing others. He, he, I, I think he, this is a good time for everybody. You know, like, I, I want to be a church that doesn't stockpile goods. I mean, you know, like, I don't want a pantry full of food when we've got a, a, a neighborhood that's hungry. Yeah. Right? And I, I, don't, I don't want to be that way, and we aren't. And that's why I love this church. And I'm not saying other churches are or anything like that. God forbid me to ever say that. I'm just saying that's, that's just what we want to do when we're here is make sure if we have it, you got it. Like, like if I got it, my brother got it, right? Like, it's, it's not just for me. It's for, it's for we. You know, it's for us. You know, it's, it's, it's ours collectively. And then Jesus said in Matthew, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, what church? That's where your heart is. You, you, you'll, and that's what James is trying to push forth with what he's telling us in this thing. Yeah, it's, it's a hard bit of scripture, but what he's saying is that where's your heart at? Is your heart like Scrooge where he's just like, man, my, I don't know, that's why I was thinking of it, because, you know, that little duck, man, like, he was all about his treasure, right? He was just like, like it, was, it was so hard for him to like go out with, with like one little coin missing, like he knew. Like, I remember an episode where he's swimming and he's just like, there's a coin missing. Like, what? Like, that's I think of cartoons. This is, how, this is your pastor. I'm sorry. I, I watch cartoons. But um, I got kids, so I just, you know. He makes, I watch a lot of Coco Melon, too. Uh, you know, uh, I know my alphabet really well. So. But no, but like, it's, just, it's just crazy because like, that, that's what we always were taught to be valued. And, and, and like, I, like I tell you, church, is, it's been revealed to me on numerous occasions that the, the most valuable thing in this world is relationship. Like, like I, I thought, like, I used to always never have money, so I used to say, oh, well, you know, what time's valuable? <laughs> you know, like, time, because time's a valuable commodity. You don't, you can't get that time. You can always make money. So I always thought, man, time, time, time. But then as I got married and now that I got kids and now that I'm actually present with my family, because for a long time, church, I wasn't present with them. I, I, was, I, was, I was either on drugs or I was just waiting to leave. Like, they, they didn't get all of me because I was separated in my own things. I was, I was busy. Like, you know, and then when I wasn't, I was thinking, how am I going to get money to go get my drugs or go get my stuff, right? Like, you know, my, my family never got the chance to actually experience me present until later on in life when I got my head out of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm thankful that the ones that stuck by me did. Because I needed those, that, those tenacious people to say, Mike, man, I keep telling you good advice. And, you know, I don't know what's going on. Just, I, I want to pound it into your brain, but, you know, it just somehow just leaks out. You know, and I'm just, I'm just glad for them. But, you know, the biggest blessing was, was God it was the one that revealed to me that, where's your heart at, Mike? Is your heart with those things of this world or is your heart with my people? Is your heart with me? Because that, that, that's, that's what I'm telling you, church, is that, that, that's the most precious gift that God has given you is the relationships. And, and I think what it is, is this week I got to do two major events. I got to do
do a funeral on Monday and I got to do a wedding on Wednesday. On one, I was celebrating the beginning of a new life in heaven. I was celebrating the beginning of a life here, right here on this earth. And both are just such momentous occasions that God honors and God loves. But when you see both facets of it, man, you can't just have to think, wow, man, isn't God good? God is just so wonderful to us. He loves us so much. And then that just gets me going with the whole relationship thing. Like, man, I'll give it all to you, God, because it's yours anyway. And like I said, he just keeps on giving me little lessons because he just... He, he, he just, he never, what does he say? If you, ask, if you ask, you'll get it, right? If you seek it, you'll find it. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're wondering, God, what, what do I need to do? Go to him. And he will reveal it to you. Then James goes into saying, all right, well now, now that your heart is this way, he's uh, not only do we see it by the way you your heart is because you, you all you want to do is Hoard so much stuff that it's gonna go. This is gonna rust and rot. But he's saying there's people that are around you, and then he tells them, "Look, the wages you fail to pay your the workers who mowed your field are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty." And Isaiah says, "Woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees and deprive the poor of their rights, and without justice." Or withhold justice from my oppressed people. God has a problem when you when, when you take advantage of people. But what happens when all of a sudden all, all, the, all that you're worried about is money, so you start to take advantage of people. You start to just say, hey, you know, well, better me than you. Well, you know what? Like, it's a doggy dog world. You know what I mean? Like, if he, if, he, if I don't get it, he's gonna get it, kind of thing. Like I, I, I remember all those kind of things is you know, the survival of the fittest, whatever thing that you subscribe to, people think that way, and that's why we have a world right now where, I mean, people are at each other's throats for the little scraps that we're given. You know, I mean, I mean, we're so angry about, you know, five bucks or ten bucks or whatever that we're not even seeing that the person like that is really oppressing us has a thousand bucks, but I'm about to go beat up my neighbor for five. Now, I'm not saying go be with the thousand, thousand, the guy with a thousand bucks, love on him, love on everybody. What we're saying is that money is not what's going to give you joy. That's not what we're, we're about in this in this world. Well, that's what the world's about, but that's not what we're about while we're in this world. We're about loving those who have the five bucks, who have the thousand bucks, who have whatever bucks, because we don't really care. We just want to know about your heart. We just want to let you know that, hey, no matter how much money you've got, you still got to pay the same debt that I got to pay. Yeah. And that debt we can't pay without the blood of Jesus Christ because we don't have enough. Yeah. But thankfully, he paid it and we could have forgiveness. That Our debt that we owe to God for our sin is paid. I, 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 I'm sorry, this is a really gross fish, but I couldn't think of it. You know, I'm trying to, I don't want to get you guys. <laughs> but you have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulged. You have fattened yourselves in the slaughter, in the day of slaughter. What is it saying? It's saying, man, you, you didn't need all that. That's kind of how I do it. When I was reading it, I was like, you really don't, you didn't need all that. They got to saw this look on your face. He's like, you know, like, what, what do we do is I, I needed half of it, and here, you, know, you guys could go with the rest, right? You're like, you, it's, it's, that, it's that whole, like, that whole greedy thing, which is one of those, like, seven major sins, right? But, I mean, just, is it, it it's, just, it's a heart condition. Like greed has a way of like manifesting itself in, in a way where it will consume you. Where once you get a little bit more, then you want a little bit more, then you want a little bit more, and then all of a sudden you have it all, but now, now you have nothing because you, you, you left everyone else out. You took everything for yourself. You know, and, and so James is just warning the guys, hey man, just listen, look. Not only are they testifying to you, but you can even just see it in, 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 in the way you live. He said, you might as well just be sitting there getting fat. You get fat off of whatever you're doing. I don't think he's talking about like, 
you know, eating back is, you know, everybody's looking at me like, Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> and now I'm trying to feed you guys. I know, I'm like, I'm fat you all, too. But he's not, he's, not, he's not talking about that kind of fat. Like I said, it's a, it's a heart condition. Because what, what ends up happening when you, you just go ahead and, like, just fatten your heart. It's kind of another way of saying, you know, when, when you turn your heart, when you practice, you turn your heart into stone. Because like what what's a, what's a fat heart doing? It doesn't it doesn't like receive the blood like it doesn't have to get the oxygen it needs. You know what I mean? It doesn't work as well. What happens to a spiritual heart when it starts to turn to stone? Is we don't we don't allow people into our lives. We don't we can't express our relationship. We can't we can't love on our neighbor as we love on ourselves. We can't love our Lord and God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength because we start to harden our hearts. Because that's that's just what ends up happening as 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 it starts. That greediness, that, that taking advantage, that love of money. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It's not saying the root of all evil, it's saying all kinds. It's saying, you know, like if, if, you, if you're a good steward of it, you can do good things with it. But he's saying, if, if you don't, it could, it, could, it could get really slippery really quick. You know, you have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. Now, he, now he's saying, and like the only way I could interpret this, because yeah, it gets to that extreme part, like where like you you'll be willing to murder for what you are. But I had to look at it in in, in a pastor sense, right? And, and what what this reminded me is, who did we who did we murder that was innocent? Who did we put on the cross that was innocent? Jesus Christ was crucified by us, church. But he was willing to be crucified by us so that way we could have our debts paid. So we could be forgiven. I mean, yeah, I mean, we would be like, no, it was the Roman soldiers. There wasn't the Roman. It was, it was the Jews that, like I said, crucify him. But theologically speaking, but truthfully speaking, it was our sin that placed him on the cross. For we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And it's because of that that God had to come down and save us. And, and, and even though we're the ones that drove those nails into his wrist, he embraces us and grabs us and says, I love you. I love you just the way you are, and I'll forgive you. I know you did it, but I let you do it. You know, you know one of the things he could have called heaven's armies down to stop everything. But, but, but he did it because he allowed it to happen because it had to happen. Because like we said last week, because it was his father's will, it was God's will. In him lie hidden all the treasures and wisdom and knowledge. It's when we give our life to Christ that we have true treasure. And that treasure that we have is the wisdom and knowledge of knowing who God is, not just knowing about him. There's, a, there's plenty of people that know about God. There's only a small amount that know God. My prayer is that you know him today. In Proverbs 2, 1-6 it says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. And like I said, that knowledge you talk about is, is, that, is that relationship with God. If I can have you guys all stand. Thank you guys for bearing. I know I, know I talked a lot, but I'm feeding you after this. Well, not me. The Holy Spirit's feeding you after this. And, you know, not me. But like I said, the true treasure is knowing God. In Matthew 13, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. When you understand who God is, you'll be willing to get rid of everything that's inhibiting that relationship. So, if I could call up 
Mike Solano wants to do the benediction. And I'm going to call the prayer teams. Uh, Jamie and Gilbert, Rob Frankel, Tina Lucero, Robert Avila, and Brian Lacey. You guys can come up and pray. And, and if you guys feel a calling in your heart, come and get prayer with them. But if you just need prayer, come and get prayer. Don't worry. The food's going to still be downstairs. So if you guys got time to pray and be blessed by these wonderful and amazing prayer warriors. But just know, church, I love you. We love you. And uh, God bless. Well, there's, um, there's some things that are guaranteed. Jesus will always love us and will never forsake us. And another thing is that as we walk through this life, there are things that we pick up, things that have bad habits, sins of all kinds, you know, And but we can come to the Lord Jesus Christ with our problems, with our sins, and we can lay these burdens upon Him. And that is what's so good about the Gospel is, is that it's not up to us, it's up to the Lord Jesus Christ. And all we have to do is come to Him and confess our faults and our failures, no matter what they might be. And the only um, sin that's unforgivable is that sin that we don't confess. So when we bring our things to the Lord Jesus Christ, He will forgive us. So how many people want to change their lives today? How many people want Jesus Christ to come and, and dwell in them and, and just to help them? So, Lord God, you see these people, Lord, and I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would just come down upon my brothers and sisters here, Lord God, that you would put your blessings upon their lives. Lord, that we would forgive us of our sins and our failures, Lord. And we, we come to you and we want to um, just worship and praise you. And we thank you, Lord God. And, and in Jesus' name, I pray these things. And amen. And so come on up and, and get prayer. Come on up and, uh, and just be thankful to the Lord. And uh, God bless you guys. And don't forget, we got a, we got a feast downstairs. Hallelujah. And we're going to have a, a little worship service down there while we eat. And so you're all invited. So, amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, blessed week.